Hi, I'm Jared Gardner, and I'm here today with my Dermatopathology Fellow, Dr. Ed Fulton. And Ed's picked out some additional interesting cases today. The, the entity we're going to talk about today is um, called by a couple of different names. It's uh, Inclusion Body Fibromatosis. And the other names it's known by are Infantile Digital Fibroma or Infantile Digital Fibromatosis. Like all things in soft tissue pathology, the multiple names are kind of a mouthful and make, uh, make things sound more confusing maybe than they are. This is a really neat entity because it's got a unique clinical presentation. It usually occurs on the digits of babies, so either the toes or the fingers, and it has an interesting predilection to the second, third, and fourth digits particularly, usually on the dorsal aspect and the middle to the distal portion of the digit. And uh, about 30% or so of these are present at the time of birth, and uh, the rest develop usually within um, uh, the first uh, year or so of life. And rarely they've been reported in other sites away from the digits, and even in adults, I've never seen that. I've only seen them on the digits of babies, but it's been reported. The name tells you what you're gonna expect to see here, inclusion body fibromatosis. First of all, it's a fibroblastic proliferation that it fills the dermis and sometimes extends into the subcutis. When we go down to higher power, what we see are fibroblasts that are running in these fascicles, fascicles that are kind of weaving back and forth with one another, okay? And so you can see where the name fibromatosis comes from. And it's important to remember this is not at all related to uh, desmoid fibromatosis or some of the other uh, fibromatoses that you hear about. And it's not related to um, palmar or plantar fibromatosis, which in my experience usually occurs in adults and is usually down deeper in the, the soft tissue of the hand, the palm or the sole, and is attached to the underlying tendons uh, rather than centered in the dermis like inclusion body fibromatosis. So it's important to, to not get it confused with those. But you can see that these are fascicles here. And I think I've got my condenser flipped, so it gives this refractile look. I think it's a nice way to see the architecture of the cells, okay? So you can see they're streaming along in these fascicles. Nowhere near as broad and wide of fascicles as you'd see in desmoid fibromatosis. And again, desmoid fibromatosis uh, rarely occurs on the hands or feet rarely will occur in young kids and almost never involves the dermis unless it's part of a larger mass that's pushing up. And I have a video on desmoid tumors, uh, desmoid fibromatosis. I'll pop a link up into the upper right hand corner here um, so you can see that. So you can see that these are fibroblasts. And my uh, desmoid fibromatosis video uh, actually also has a discussion of how to tell fibroblasts apart from, say, smooth muscle cells. So even though, again, this is not a desmoid tumor we're looking at, that video does have some helpful clues about that. So here's a real nice example of these streaming fascicles. They're streaming like, like a school of fish all swimming together. All of these elongated nuclei running in the same direction. There's pink um, collagen fibers in between each cell, which is a characteristic feature of fibroblasts. And even from here, you can already see, look at, this is the key, these are the inclusion bodies. These little bright red or pink globules of actin filament that are condensed um, in the cytoplasm of the, of the fibroblasts right next to the nucleus, okay? And even though we say this is fibroblastic, actually if you do in a smooth muscle actin stain, you'll see the wispy tram track pattern of actin staining that is characteristic of myofibroblastic processes. Uh, in my opinion, fibroblastic and myofibroblastic entities in soft tissue pathology have a lot of overlap, and I think fibroblast and myofibroblast are closely related cells. So I don't make a huge point about distinguishing between those two um, uh, phenotypes of cell. When you have this clinical history of a nodule on the fingers or toes of a baby and you see fascicles of bland fibroblastic spindle cells and little inclusion bodies, you're done. There's, to, in my opinion, no immunostains are needed. This is the diagnosis. This is inclusion body fibromatosis. If you wanted to do a fancy stain, there are a few stains that will stain and highlight these little, um, these little inclusion bodies. There's a kind of an old school stain called phosphatungsic acid hematoxylin or PTAH. It will highlight those little gloss globules in a dark purple color. Um, most labs that I've ever worked at do not have that stain available even because it's kind of an older histochemical technique. You can also use the trichrome stain which will highlight these bright uh, red in color. And I think the Movat stain supposedly will stain them pink, but I, I don't routinely use Movat. Although it's a pretty stain, I don't usually use it in soft tissue pathology personally. And um, also, I, if you use potassium hydroxide to pretreat the tissue, these globules will also stain with smooth muscle actin immunostain. Um, at least that's what the WHO book says. I'm not exactly sure how you do potassium hydroxide 
uh, pre-treatment, but that's what the books say. In in my uh, practice, I've the I only see these occasionally, and I think they're almost always diagnosable on H and E only without any special stains. They're quite beautiful to look at, and they are benign, but they do have a tendency for local recurrence. And some of the early literature suggested that they had a 60 or 70 percent recurrence rate, but if you completely excise them, the rate is probably lower. And and also in my experience, a lot of the soft tissue tumors, even benign ones on the hands and feet have a higher tendency for local recurrence and I personally believe that's because we are uh, surgeons are often a lot more conservative when they're removing things on the hands and feet and there's a, a very limited amount of space there between the skin, the subcutis, the underlying um, uh, uh, tendons and soft tissues and muscles. And so um, it's understandable that things will grow back more often there, because, especially kind of infiltrative things, because it's uh, harder to get the entire lesion out without, you know, potentially compromising other structures. And so I think surgeons are a little bit more cautious there, and rightfully so. So um, uh, it does recur locally, uh, but it's not a, an aggressive lesion and it's not malignant. So again, it's important to distinguish this, say, from desmoid tumor. Um, and uh, with this clinical history, with these inclusion bodies, and with the lesion being centered in the dermis, um, it, you should basically never have that problem because desmoid tumor wouldn't, desmoid fibromatosis wouldn't look like this. So again, um, some areas here, you can see some of the fascicle growth. Here's a fascicle kind of pushing down into the subcutis. But up in the dermis here, it's not quite as fascicular as the last, uh, uh, the other piece of tissue on this slide, but you can still see those nice little pink inclusion bodies, which are the hallmark of this disease. All right, now I'm gonna show you one additional case that is less fascicular and might at first glance be harder to recognize. Here's a little papule from the toe, or I think this was from the finger if I recall, of a young baby, a one-year-old. So again, right away, there's a limited number of things I'm gonna be thinking about in my differential for, for a skin nodule on the finger of a baby. And even though this doesn't have the, uh, you can see here again with the condenser flipped, you can see that there are spindle cells with intervening collagen. See those, those kind of refractile lines standing out are the pink collagen bundles being deposited by the fibroblasts, which are the paler areas that you're seeing there. So that's how you can tell apart what the, the cells are and the intervening collagen that they make. And that's a characteristic of both fibroblasts and myofibroblasts that they'll lay down collagen in between them. So when you go closer, you can see these are kind of plump spindled fibroblasts or myofibroblasts. They don't really look nearly as fascicular as the original case I showed you, but with a little bit of searching, you can see that they do. They're a little bit more subtle here. Now, there's a red blood cell there, but you can see there, 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 even right there, those are the inclusion bodies. So if you look around a little bit, and there's a couple more over here, so the, the fibroblastic fascicles are not always quite um, so dramatic, and these cells are more plump and kind of have pale chromatin and central nucleoli. Again, to my mind, this is what myofibroblasts kind of look like, and so I think we kind of have an overlap between myofibroblasts and fibroblast type cells here in this lesion. And again, here you can see that it's certainly there's a spindle cell proliferation in the dermis. It is nowhere near as organized into fascicles but uh, looking around and finding those inclusion bodies is gonna be the key to recognizing uh, this entity. So I hope you've enjoyed um, a quick visit with um, our friend Inclusion Body Fibromatosis, and uh, please subscribe and uh, click like down below if you like this video, and again, as always, I'd appreciate any comments or questions in the comment section below. Um, thanks so much for watching.